Bueno, buenas tardes a, a todas y todos. Eh, les doy la bienvenida en primer lugar al 181 periodo de sesiones. Esta es la tercera audiencia de este periodo de sesiones. Eh, el objetivo de esta audiencia es tratar el, la temática de la separación forzada de personas en El Salvador. Esta audiencia ha sido solicitada por un conjunto de organizaciones de la sociedad civil salvadoreña. No la, no la voy a mencionar en aras del tiempo. Hello. Eh, y eh, en esta audiencia eh, tenemos. Can you hear me, Margaret? Apart from the commissioners, I will name them. United Nations against forced disappearances. I would like to uh, say that with regards to the presentation of Ms. Carmen Rosa Villa, she will talk about the principles for the uh, search of disappeared persons because of the importance of these principles in the reduction of forced disappearances in the region and in the world. But we believe that uh, there's no uh, competence on Salvador since El Salvador has not ratified the convention, but uh, the commission believes that these principles are very important to bring down forced disappearances in the region. First of all, my name is Antonia Urrejola. I am the president of the uh, Commission of Human uh, Inter-American Commission of Human Rights. I'm the Rapporteur for Truth, uh, Memory, and Justice. I'm also joined by Margaret May Macaulay. She is the Country Rapporteur, Commissioner Joel Hernandez, who is the Rapporteur for uh, the Human Rights Defenders, Commissioner Estuardo Rallon, who is the um, Rapporteur for Persons Deprived of Their Liberty. And we also have ex the Executive Secretary, Tania Relo, and uh, Ms. Maria Claudia Pulido, and the entire team of the Executive Secretariat who allow us to monitor this, this situation in Salvador, uh, how we owe it to them to have this virtual session. So I would like to greet them all. I would like to welcome the representatives of the state and the representatives of the civil society, and also Ms. Carmen Rosa Villa. Thank you very much for being here today. This hearing will have or will follow the following schedule. First of all, the civil society will have 20 minutes to um, present on the uh, topic of the hearing, then the state will have another 20 minutes. Then, then Ms. Carmen Rosavilla will have seven minutes to um, discuss the guiding principles. And then the commission will have 20 minutes for questions or comments. Then uh, each of the parties will have 10 minutes to answer to our questions. Please. While you're not speaking, turn your microphones off. And as we always do in the sessions, we have interpreting services. And we are also broadcasting live in different platforms. So probably a lot of people are watching this hearing right now. With regards to the clock, you can already see the um, timer. It's a digital timer you will see on the screen. So um, you will see how it will turn red when you have, I think, three minutes. If um, you are uh, going over your, your allotted time, I will let you know. Now I will give the floor to the civil society organizations. Remember, we have interpreting services on the screen below for those who need it. You can activate it there below. Uh, the screen on the uh, globe icon. Now you have the floor. Madam President, uh, Madam Commissioner, we cannot see the clock. Is it a, is it our problem? Please turn off the clock. I don't know how your screen looks, what your screen looks like. If you put it on gallery mode, one of the little squares should be the clock. Maybe you will be able to see it. If you have it on speaker, then you won't see it. Can you see it now? No. What about the civil society organizations? Yes. Yes, we see it. 
Oh, okay, now we see it, thank you. Yes, yeah, sometimes it's so many little squares that you need to look carefully, uh, but I will let you know once you have one or two minutes left, okay? Okay, now I will give the floor to the civil society organizations. Honorable Inter-American Commission on Human Rights, President of the Committee Against Forced Disappearances of the UN, ladies and gentlemen, representatives of the state, people who accompany us, have a good afternoon. My name is Zaira Navas and I appear on behalf of Cristosal and the 15 requesting organizations and groups dismayed by the considerable increase in disappeared persons in El Salvador in recent years, whether forced or committed by individuals, which occurred within the framework of the criminality and militarized security in Salvador. The repre this presentation will emphasize on the um, magnitude of this current phenomenon and the deficient state response to prevent, investigate, and punish these serious crimes, as well as the lack of effective mechanisms adhering to national and international human rights standards, which guarantee the search and determination of the whereabouts of the disappeared victims from a differential approach that highlights the vulnerability of young people, women, and LGBT, LGBTIQ plus people. As representatives of, the, of this um, organizations. I am accompanied by Sonia Rubio, Alejandra Burgos, Joanna Ramirez, and Kerlin Belloso from different civil society organizations. This type of disappearances in Salvador, this is not a new phenomenon. The records show that since 2002, the gangs went from using the murders and dismemberment of people whose remains were left in public places to hiding them in clandestine graves to remain in impunity. These crimes have been characterized by the deprivation of liberty and torture prior to the murder and subsequent concealment of the body of the victims. Experience shows that when people do not appear in the first week, it is most likely that they have been victims of homicides or femicides with the subsequent concealment of the course of the body. Between 2005 and 2016, authorities reported 238 clandestine graves where the remains of thousands of people were found, many of them reported missing. According to journalistic sources in 2017, 664 victims were located in these graves which shows that the disappearance of people or persons has been for two decades a systematic criminal practice, mostly attributed to gangs. Although in recent years, it has been documented that they, have all, that they are also produced by state agents and people from the family work or community environment of the victims. In other words, El Salvador is experiencing disappearances by private individuals, but also forced disappearances. When the disappearance is committed by gangs, in the case of girls and women, it occurs as an object of revenge as a, and a means to mark territories. It's characterized by temporary deprivation and liberty in which they are usually assaulted and abused, leading to femicides and the disappearance of the victim's body. In the case of adolescents and men, they occur in retaliation for refusing to participate in gang activities or to join them dispute over territories and drug sales, giving information to the police and travel through places under the control of the opposing gang, among others. In disappearances committed by individuals, in the case of women, generally those responsible are their partners or ex-partners, which shows sexist violence. In men, they are related to reckoning, to uh, revenge. In both cases, it's human trafficking and smuggling that are also part of it. We report that as of 2019, the authorities stopped publishing statistics on clandestine graves and bones found. On the other hand, the lack of a unified statistical, statistical registry on disappeared persons makes it impossible to establish patterns on the disappearances and the characteristics of the victims. The information obtained um, by the different um, state organizations differ one from another. This means that an official number of missing persons is not known in the country. In 2019, the PMC reported 737 missing persons, while for 2020, despite the mandatory quarantine due to the COVID-19 health crisis for six months, the data was not more encouraging. The public prosecution reported 683 
people who were disappeared. 69% were men, 31% were women. 45% of them were found alive. 6% of them were found dead. 49% of the cases are still under investigation. The worst part is that there were only two convictions that year. Until June 2021, there's um, up to June 20, 2021, there are three, 610 reports of missing persons. So during the first five months of this year alone, there were slightly more than 80%, more than 80% more cases in 2020. Out of every 10 victims, approximately seven were men, three were women, 3% were found deceased, 50% were alive, 47% are still being investigated. Now, mass media says that up to August, uh, over 900 uh, uh, um, disappearances were reported. So four people disappear every day in Salvador. And according to uh, several investigations, it is reported that the government is uh, collaborating with these gangs. Now, Sonia Rubio will speak. Well, as the commission knows, the disappearance of persons in Salvador is an issue that's terribly heinous. And the, these disappearances are never solved. And in the last few years, thousands of disappearances were reported. Now, the requesting parties believe that the adoption of criminal policies and having a sound um, regulationary framework is of the essence in order to solve disappearance cases and also to accompany family members. That is why we are concerned that there's no official recognition of this issue and that there isn't a specialized institution to address this scourge. Evidently, this is all caused by the lack of political will and part of the um, decision not to address the disappearance of persons in um, El Salvador. An example of this can be seen in how the uh, state has refused to ratify the convention on the issue. That is why authorities in general usually use six different criminal types to investigate disappearances. It can even be um, kidnapping or uh, deprivation of liberty to actual for enforced disappearances of persons. Even a new one was created now. Disappearance cre provoked by individuals. And this is the latest one. Now, this does not address the phenomenon from a um, comprehensive point of view. And these special types of uh, disappearances are uh, usually the investigations are usually botched because of a lack of training and perspective. And the institutions who should be following this perspective don't have the human resources uh, to um, are, who are special, specialized in these issues. And there isn't a national commission to find or to solve the current cases. That is why when a disappearance is reported, the public prosecutor should work in a swift manner and use the police as an auxiliary to the uh, investigation. But according to a study made by one of our organizations, the public prosecution um, takes too long to receive a um, report and await 72 hours before starting an investigation. This does not agree with the jurisprudence of the uh, Inter-American Court of Human Rights and the guiding principles of the UN, which both point to the fact that authorities should investigate the issue immediately. This is done under the hypothesis that these persons could still be alive at that point. This contradicts even the uh, national standards of uh, search of persons in El Salvador, which considers international instruments and the uh, search of enforced disappearances once the, um, the, the report is received without delay. 
thus protecting the rights of those persons disappeared. This is just another example of the lack of willingness by the authorities to find these persons and to deny the, vic the family victims to um, their right to find their loved ones, probably because they wish to uh, hide this and um, protect statistics. According to the government, the uh, issue of the disappeared persons uh, is an issue of the opposition. So even though we recognize that some measures were implemented, like, such as the creation of a unit specialized in the issue, we need to be emphatic because there hasn't been much progress in the investigations. So far, we have only, only seen a punitive response that has nothing to do with the comprehensive approach that international institutions recommend. Now, Alejandra, a word of from the um, feminist collective will speak. Girls, adolescents, young people, women, and LGBTI persons in Salvador have always uh, faced disappearance, including sexual violence, feminicide, and hate crimes as a strategy for control, territory dispute, and revenge within a framework of disprotection by the state. So far, most of these disappearances, it is believed that are caused by gangs or organized crime. But in many cases, there's evidence of the participation of state agents, especially armed forces. Out of the total of reported case in the past few years, about 30 or 40% of them represent uh, reports on girls and women who are rarely found alive or dead. And in these cases, the alerts for searches are um, do not occur because authorities say that they live in territories that are gang controlled, basically, um, blaming them for their disappearances. And one, a good example of this is the disappearance of Alison Renderos, which showed the weaknesses of our system. In Salvador, the disappearance of women as an act before or um, after feminicide is systematic, as is seen in the case of the feminicide of journalist Carla Turcio, where the abusers and murders were part of their uh, family. In spite of that, the alert systems continue to ignore this factor, and that is why their results are not effective. The list of disappeared women is broad, and many cases of women have been used as a symbol of fight, as, is, as was the case of Raquel Salazar Aquino, a young woman who, before her disappearance, had attended um, workshops, feminist workshops for young women. She left her house looking for a job. She never came back and her family has been looking for her since 2019. Another exemplary case is the one of Flor Garcia, who was 33. Her family members created a movement called We Are All Flor, but after 105 days of her disappearance, her remains were found in the municipality of Cojutepeque after the um, murder confessed her husband. And we can also add the disappearances of trans women, like as the case of Jade Camila Diaz, who disappeared in 2019. She left her house and her remains were found three days later on a river with uh, signs of torture. Comcavis Trans has reported the, um, uh, the lack of uh, willingness of the authorities to find trans women, as was the case of Jalen Beckers, who disappeared in Salvador in 2019. In the so in social media, different persons and organizations keep on uh, making reports because of the abandonment of the authorities. Another example is the disappearance of siblings Karen and Eduardo Guerrero on 18th of September of 2021. So far, families haven't heard from the authorities. Now, before the absence of the state, Several civil society organizations have collaborated to su provide support to family members, as is the case of the Ichel Women Association, which created an alert on social media, which allows to shed light on the search of women. The initiative came as a support to the family of Raquel Salazar Aquino to visibilize the disappearance of women. 
This action began in October 2020 with the picture name and personal data of each of the women who had disappeared. So far, they have published 72 alerts. Out of them, 48 are girls between 12 and 18 years old. They come from uh, poor families uh, who live in territories dominated by criminal structures that are left by the state. And we must remember the uh, clandestine cemetery of Telchuapa at the house of a former members of the police which contained up to 30 bodies, most of them women. This is an exemplary case because it shows the recurrency of the human rights violations faced by women and the um, fight of people to find their family members, but also the state's attitude because the um, public prosecutor ended up benefiting the uh, accused, but nothing else has happened. It, the state has not been transparent. It has hidden information and decreed um, the reservation of all data. And even though uh, there should be confidentiality on the data of the family members, this crime cannot escape transparency and social control. So the state is not uh, fulfilling its duty and it's um, obstaculizing the search of family members and the civil society. Now, Karim Belloso will speak about our petition. The families of the disappeared, apart from the suffering and hopelessness caused by the disappearance of the loved one, face the abandonment and indifference of the state. From the moment that the person disappears, their family or any person who is looking for them face with the first obstacle um, to denounce this fact, the lack of social recognition by the state that the facts of the disappearance are happening. There is also the discredit made by members of the justice system, such as policemen or prosecutors, when the first statement is taken from the relatives. Victims are stigmatized, criminalized by pointing out that they are part of gangs or other criminal structures. Many people choose not to report the incident to official bodies and prefer to seek legal advice and humanitarian support from non-governmental organizations. In most cases, the proactive search for missing persons has been undertaken by the parents of the victims, mainly the mothers. These are generally single mothers and heads of households who are responsible for the maintenance of other children and even the grandchildren who have remained in their care under their care after the disappearance of their mothers and fathers. Generally, they are people with limited resources and educations who reside in the interior of the country, which exacerbates the gaps in access to justice, both to, due to their social condition and the stigmatization that surrounds the figure of the disappeared person. In that sense, it is the civil society organizations who have replaced the role of the state in the search of disappeared persons. This despite constant attacks on the social network pages made available to receive any type of information and find out the whereabouts of the disappeared, especially the pages uh, SOS Desaparecidos, Alerta Raquel. According to a FESPAD report, a good part of the reported cases um, were related to the fact that several police delegations uh, were visited because some policemen sent them from one delegation to another. They didn't want to receive the complaint. These events place the safety of the victims' families in a vulnerable conditions since they undertake the search of their loved one by their own means. They do not have the support of justice of authorities. We also have to highlight the discriminatory treatment that family members receive from respectful attitudes, lack of consideration, and hostility in the stages of the process. Faced with this panorama in which the institutions do not assume the responsibility of effectively managing the cases of the disappeared persons and the attention to the families, we ask this uh, commission to urge the Salvadoran state to, one, create a single national registry of disappeared persons of public access and from a differential approach that integrates information from the different state institutions and non-governmental organizations that work with relatives and victims of the disappeared. Likewise, a genetic bank should be created uh, taking into account the particular conditions of each of the populations. The prosecution uh, should strengthen the specialized unit of disappeared persons, both in uh, human and financial resources, as well regarding specialized capa capa capacities to carry out searches according to international and national standards on the matter. Likewise, the prosecutors 
um, office and the judicial body strengthen their capacities to investigate, judge and punish forced disappearances and other disappearances according to the most advanced standards of a criminal international comparative law. It is essential that for the effective search for disappeared persons, the, the prosecutor has coordination of the three state bodies and the Office of the Human Rights Ambassador so that they adopt strategies or policies aimed at prevention, attending, eradicating, investigating, and punishing the responsible first persons. It is necessary to create a curb protocol for people looking for disappeared victims from a comprehensive approach that the state submitted uh, for discussion in the Legislative Assembly a law on the search for disappeared persons in accordance with international standards and human rights and international humanitarian law, where clear guidelines are established for the care of both victims of disappearance as well as of their relatives. In addition, that the state creates a national commission for the search of disappeared persons. Six, the Salvadoran state recognized the phenomenon in all its dimensions and it refrained from stigmatizing, criminalizing the persons who search for the disappeared uh, persons and they complied with the recommendations on the matter made by this commission at the end of its on-site visit in December 2019. In addition that this honorable commission reiterates the need to ratify the international conventions related to enforced disappearances. We also ask this commission to pronounce on the matter and make specific observations on disappeared persons so that the state can take it up again. Finally, the organizations requesting this hearing respectfully request the commission to include this hearing in its final statement at the closing of the 181st period of sessions. Thank you. Thank you to the representatives of the civil society. You have an extra minute, so if the state wants to use one more minute, they can do so. Now I will give the floor to the representatives of the state for 21 minutes. Good morning. We would like to greet the, on behalf of the state of El Salvador to the commissioners of the commission, the secretariat and the staff, as well as the petitioners. Also, I would like to greet with solidarity those relatives of disappeared persons who may be watching this hearing today and everyone who in a direct or indirect way have suffered the pain of uh, the disappearance of a loved one. We hope we can express the efforts carried out by the state to provide a comprehensive response to the victims and their relatives and address the phenomenon as it was mentioned that has a deep impact on our society through the policy regarding public security. Uh, we count with a representative of the Attorney General's Office, Serrano, who is in charge of the cases of disappeared persons, Emer Castro, who represents the Ministry of Justice and Public Safety, and Oscar Quijano and Romero, who are part of the Department of uh, Forensic Anthropology from the Institute of Legal Medicine in El Salvador. Ana Cornet is also present, representative the Attorney General's Office, Gloria Martinez, and different representatives of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. I will now give the floor to Castro, representative of the Ministry of Justice and Public Safety. Thank you. Good morning to all the commissioners, to all the petitioners, members of the civil society, and all the persons from El Salvador who are watching this hearing. We will mention some antecedents of the state response in this regard. The Ministry of Justice and Public Safety works in a project of a full uh, strengthening of uh, the system to reduce impunity in El Salvador regarding forced disappearances. 
the Attorney General's Office is part of the project as well as Supreme Court of Justice, and we count also with a specialized technical support. This project was created in two stages. The first one has already concluded, and the second one will uh, take place from 2020 to uh, 2023. This is a coordinated work carried out in order to address different uh, cases of disappeared persons. We have developed uh, different mechanisms with the Attorney General's Office, the National uh, Police, the Legal Medicine, and the Ambus Persons Office for the Defense of Human Rights to create a national framework to solve cases of enforced disappearances. This has allowed us to assess this um, problem, taking into account different statistics and technical instruments. First of all, we have a protocol of urgent action in order to address uh, the cases of uh, disappeared persons. This was created in 2018. It is aimed at coordinating uh, actions between the different bodies to find disappeared persons. This protocol was developed with different institutions and had a positive impact, reducing the time in which these institutions search and find disappeared persons. This protocol does not establish uh, time uh, to um, for this institution to start searching and investigating disappearances. So it acts in a very fast way, and this protocol is applied in different cases of disappearance persons with an um, approach uh, focused on non-discrimination and with a gender approach. This also avoids different uh, actions that may be discriminatory or uh, stigmatization, preventing people to access uh, the investigation. Since 2018, together with the Attorney General's Office, we carry out investigations at the national level. We also have a document, a guideline in order to follow a protocol in the case of forced disappearances. This is a comprehensive criterion that has been included to the national framework, taking into account a human rights approach. As a result of the project, there have been significant changes that address our social reality. We are following uh, this protocol, taking into account international standards in the case of enforced disappearances. The Ministry of Justice and Public Safety has followed up the impact of these normative changes and how organized crime has reacted to these changes in order to assess the efficiency of this tool. This problematic affects especially women, girls, and the youth in general who are vulnerable groups. So we're constantly reviewing um, technical documents. This includes specialized training in order to understand the phenomenon of uh, disappeared persons. There have been different workshops for uh, different state officials for judicial employees as well within the Ministry of Justice, the National Academy of National Justice, for example, and the National Police as well. This project was called Strengthening for the Implementation of Tools for the Cases of Disappearances and Torture, which especially affects women, men, and youth people in El Salvador. This has been is being developed from 2022 to 2023, putting emphasis on the increase of the use of these 
tools and the protocols for uh, the cases of disappeared persons, the strategic training of the uh, official officials and the support for the investigations, improving the response of the judiciary with a gender perspective through the strengthening of the response to the victims in order to improve the user's attention, the implementation of a software for the public registration commissioners, people of El Salvador, the El Salvador is providing answers to this issue and we are trying to improve our uh, the way we proceed. In different cases, such as the one that was mentioned, the Chalchuapa case, as one of the representatives have mentioned, this uh, special case is being investigated and the Ministry of Justice and Public Safety has established a multidisciplinary team that was in charge of um, the crime scene in order to guarantee the um, investigation and also the psychological attention of the relatives of the victims. Also guaranteeing conditions of privacy for the relatives, and it's important to highlight, take into account the relevance of the Ministry of Justice in the investigation of these cases. The different uh, communications operators in the country have been working together with the Ministry to improve our response in the case of disappeared persons. Also, we are working on avoiding the re-victimization of the relatives of the victims. And also we are working on creating a um, genetic profile uh, with the relatives of the victims in order to improve our uh, records. We understand the grief suffering by uh, the persons, uh, the citizens of El Salvador who do not know the whereabouts of their relatives. The Ministry of Justice and Public Safety is aware of this, and this is a true commitment when it comes to implementing immediate solutions and technical solutions to the current problems suffered by the people of El Salvador. Thank you. In order to continue with our presentation, I will give the floor to Serrano, chief of the specialized unit for the cases of disappeared persons of the Attorney General's office. Good afternoon, Commission. We want to greet the, the petitioners of this hearing and all the relatives of the persons who have disappeared. We want to restate the willingness of the state to investigate these cases. We are aware of your uncertainty and the grief that you suffer all over the country. You can, be, you can rest assured that we are working in each of your cases in a professional and responsible way. We are facing problems that have been present for a long time in our society. And we have adopted a more comprehensive approach, more efficient one, focused on providing results and answers to the relatives of the victims. We have made visible this situation and we have implemented different strategies in order to address this issue in a comprehensive way. We have made changes that have a visible impact. Together with those actions, we have created a specialized unit for the cases of uh, disappeared persons. This unit works in an exclusive way to the investigation of the disappeared uh, cases of disappeared persons. It has national jurisdiction and independence for its um, to carry out its work. It is, 
has received 139 cases. 35% um, are resulted in court investigations. 34%, 25% are currently being investigated. It is important to mention that among the uh, cases that resulted in convictions, different uh, perpetrators were identified, persons who uh, were, um, who did carry out those disappearances. The state has its duty to carry out in the investigations to search and find disappeared persons with due diligence. That is why the Attorney General's Office has also created a guideline for the urgent search and investigation of disappeared persons in order to improve the different uh, process um, by implementing guidelines at the national level in order to guarantee the efficient investigation all over the country. As it has been pointed out, we have carried out a substantial legislative um, reforms in order to improve um, our instruments in this matter. For example, the uh, crime can be committed by any person and the case of disappeared presence does not only imply um, restricting or depriving someone of its liberty, but also the concealment of the remains. These uh, reforms has been made in order to overcome all the um, obstacles uh, that were hindering the investigations in the past. The crime, the criminal type, establishes a um, punishment of more than 15 years in prison. In Article 365 of the Criminal Code, also balances the uh, conviction, the punishment for more than 15 years, um, regardless of uh, who committed this crime. a common crime that may be committed by any person as long as it is acting under the um, order of a public official or um, public figure. Also, the punishment in that case is of more than uh, 15 years. This is also established in Article 366 of the criminal code. We have not been passive regarding the criminality of these events, and we have developed strategies and actions in order to have a comprehensive approach of these cases. This year, since January to October, we have received more than a thousand claims of disappeared persons and 1,192 victims have um, denounced violations of their rights. So in 51% of the cases, different instruments were uh, implemented in order to investigate the cases. In many, in some cases, victims uh, were not found alive, but in all cases, uh, we keep on searching for the whereabouts of these victims. Out of these cases, 32% are women. In a few cases, we were not able to identify the gender. It is important to um, highlight that we already have a section a specialized um, for women, special unit for women, adolescents, in order to have a gender approach using the different tools to punish uh, violence against women 
On October the 7th, the prosecutor announced the creation of an ad hoc secretary for the defense of women's rights that incorporates a technical specialist with the necessary capabilities to achieve justice in each of the cases. Finally, I would like to highlight new mechanisms in the short term. For example, the creations of a registry uh, for the uh, different claims uh, filed regarding disappeared uh, persons. These has, is being already is being developed in real time and this includes information in order to for example reduce and avoid re-victimization this includes information about the uh, victim since the first stage of uh, when the person or the relatives file the complaint also, a regional group will be created in order to use the resources that were already implemented in order to guarantee the investigation of these kind of crimes. Thank you. Uh, this is all on the part of the state. Thank you. Thank you very much. I will now give the floor for seven minutes to Carmen Rosavilla, the president of the Committee Against Enforced Disappearances of the UN. Ms. Carmen Rosa. Thank you very much. Good afternoon. I would like to thank the Commission for their invitation to our Committee Against Enforced Disappearances to take part in this public hearing with the honorable members of the uh, honorable delegation of the state of Salvador and the civil society organization representatives um, to mention the most relevant aspects of the uh, Inter-American Commission to protect all persons against enforced disappearances. The um, enforced disappearance is not just a problem from the past. It continues to be a highness uh, practice that appears everywhere around the world. Hundreds of thousands of persons have disappeared and continue to disappear. And in some contexts, that is on the rise. For example, during migrations, during the COVID-19 pandemic, within this context, women, boys, and girls are particularly vulnerable. And in many cases, they also become victims of forced disappearances, sexual violence, and other kinds of violence. The convention was adopted by the UN General Assembly in December 2006, and it entered uh, its entry into force was in 2010. So far, 64 states are part of the convention and 47 have signed it. The convention grants a legal international framework to fight enforced disappearances. Actually, as all human rights treaties, the convention is only applied to the states that have ratified it and Salvador still hasn't. Within the framework of the universal campaign for its ratification, I would like to point out a couple of aspects. Why is it important for states to ratify the convention? What kind of support can Salvador receive in case it ratifies the convention? The Convention for the Protection of All Persons Against Forced Disappearances is the first instrument of human rights that is universally binding in terms of enforced disappearances and is here to fill the gaps or the loopholes in the legal international system, um, which led to the uh, lack of protection of persons against this crime. By being part of the convention, states show their support to uh, the victims all around the world who have fought in the past 40 years to get the adoption of this treaty and the state's commitments to human rights. The convention is an instrument that supports persons and its committee has as its principal mandate to sub provide support to the states and their authorities to prevent enforced disappearances and to fight against impunity. 
And if the convention is not ratified, the committee has no competence to uh, provide support to the victims and the civil society organizations that help them, the um, international system of human rights and the state's institutions as if the state had ratified them. The convention is a landmark in the prevention and the fight against enforced disappearances. It acknowledges the autonomous right of all persons not to be subjected to enforced disappearances. It recognizes that every person that has received some sort of damage as the um, direct result of an enforced disappearance is a victim of said act. It also establishes several measures that states need to implement to prevent and eradicate enforced disappearances and to face the terrible consequences of these crimes. Now, there are three aspects of the convention that I would like to point out. First, the convention as a guiding tool so that the authorities of the state can identify the measures they need to adopt including uh, legislative measures to fight enforced disappearances, to fight impunity against the, the uh, of the authors by investigating and punishing all acts of enforced disappearances and protecting the rights of victims, including the right to truth and to reparation. Then the, con the convention as an instrument for prevention, it has several relevant characteristics for all states, even for those who doesn't have who don't have a history of enforced disappearances. This is to prevent their occurrence in all territories. This includes the prohibition of secret detentions, the protection of the right of those um, deprived of their liberty to um, uh, communicate with uh, their loved ones, or for example, and all records of these detentions need to be available to the authorities. And finally, the convention is also an instrument for the, to the, for the cooperation of the states in the fight against enforced disappearances. The um, convention uh, provides measures for recipro reciprocal assistance between the states, um, territorial cooperation, uh, the right to truth, and also the guiding principles for the search of persons who are disappeared are a very important uh, set of guidelines to uh, face all the obstacles to overcome bad practices and improve any processes of search that may take place in any state, whether they are part of the convention or not. What does this mean? It means that uh, states need to become uh, states that are part party to the treaty and the commission, uh, the commission or the committee through its mandates assists these states so that their practices and legal frameworks will be adjusted to their international obligations and will assist victims in their fight for uh, truth and reparation. The work of the committee is preventive and has allowed family members of those who are disappeared to seek justice and reparation. As we all know, the, the convention that is establishes the initial report, additional information. It has an urgent action procedure, which is a petition to the committee so that it will take um, immediate measures to loc locate and protect those who have disappeared. And also the committee has a competence to um, uh, have access to state communications, to carry out visits, and even report to the uh, UN Assembly. I believe I only have one second left. The committee would like to offer all of its support to the state of El Salvador to um, help them in all matters that have to do with this issue so that this state can ratify the convention very soon. Thank you very much. Thank you, Madam President, for your intervention. Now I will give the floor to my colleagues in case they wish to ask any specific questions about the presentations. I will start with the country rapporteur, Commissioner Margaret May McCauley. Thank you, Madam President. Um, as I greet the um, civil society uh, organizations who, who are the requesters of this um, 
hearing and um, also the representatives of the state and, and the UN um, representative who has spoken to us here today. And of course, all those from the commission who are present and my colleague commissioners. Um, <clears throat> I, I have been the rapporteur for uh, Salvador for a, a number of years. And in fact, every year I have been so, I have heard and listened and, and participated in meetings um, to deal with, which, which have as a subject of those meetings, the enforced disappearances of persons in El Salvador, the enforced disappearances of women and girl children um, also as subjects. It, seem, it seems to be a recurring topic every year. And indeed this year we did in fact uh, deal with it in, in, when, in the last period of sessions when we had a, a, a hearing as well. And also, I am always concerned that the state seems to concentrate so much more on reactive actions rather than preventive actions in relation to a, a crime, the effect of which is one of the most painful that next of kin and family members can suffer because it continues until the person is found unidentified or their remains are found unidentified. And this can go on for so many years. I know of cases in which the people have not, they have not been found and their fathers, their mothers, their spouses have died without them having been found. So I want to ask the state um, this, could you please give us full and detailed and specific information about your proactive work to minimize the occurrence of enforced disappearance. You, you have told us over the years many things about the actions and even today, and I thank you for your, the actions about your reactive um, plans and actions and setting up of various agencies and so on. But please, we need the proactive plans. Legislation alone cannot do it because what legislation is useful, how legislation is useful is if they're implemented to such an extent that they decrease the occurrence of the crime. And we're not seeing that happen. You did succeed in relation to homicides. So please explain to us why can you not succeed in relation to enforced disappearance? Because you, the state has proved that they can do it in relation to the very serious crime of homicide. So I do not want to hop on because as I, I know I have been talking to the um, state of El Salvador for many years. But please give us some information as to the proactive work you intend to do to, if not eliminate, but seriously decrease this very painful and serious crime. Thank you. Muchas gracias, Commissioner Margaret. Um, no Thank you very much, Commissioner. I don't know if Commissioner Joel Hernandez, do you have any questions? Yes, thank you, Madam President. It's not exactly a question. I'd like to make some comments. First of all, I'd like to greet the civil society organizations that have requested this hearing. Also, I would like to respectfully greet the state's representatives. 
I'm very glad you are here that we see different state organizations and also the uh, public prosecution as an autonomous organ, which is independent and has a fundamental role in the search of persons who have disappeared. And I would also like to, um, to greet uh, Carmen Rosavilla. I think it's important to point out that today, the enforced disappearance of persons is a scourge on our entire region. And that lately we have seen uh, um, provoked by individuals, but also it is very concerning when these disappearances also take place with the participation or permission of state agents. I think that the representatives of the civil society organization have explained the issue they are facing in El Salvador. They did it with a couple of mentions to different uh, cases and demands they present to the state about actions that need to be implemented. But I think that there is institutionality. There is There are regulations in El Salvador. Nevertheless, it is important to strengthen them and to go beyond protocols, but also at an institutional level so that the law will have an effect in decreasing the occurrence of this crime as Commissioner Margaret May Macaulay was pointing out. I would like to say two more things. First of all, the phenomenon of the enforced disappearance of persons has a transnational dimension. And this is something we have been observing in the case of persons from the north of Central America who are on their way to the United States as part of an enforced migration. And one of the many dangers they face is that of uh, enforced disappearance at the hands of criminal groups. So the dimension is not just national, but transnational. And I'm saying this, um, and this has to do with what Carmen Rosavilla said about the importance of the UN Convention and other instruments that are necessary to achieve international cooperations. Since they are transnational, it is very important to have transnational cooperation in the search of persons and also to sanction those who are responsible. So these are the comments I wanted to present. Thank you, Madam President. Thank you, Commissioner Hernandez. Commissioner Rallon. Thank you very much, Madam President. I just have something very small to say, but before that, I would like to greet my colleagues, the representatives of the civil society and the state of El Salvador and the president of the committee against enforced disappearances who is here with us as well. I would like to um, strengthen some of the comments my colleagues made. The first one is that of Commissioner Margaret, uh, the importance of preemptive measures. Um, joining this idea of preventive measures with uh, the state's obligation to um, carry out its due diligence to address this terrible scourge, this due diligence that, well, we have heard. We have listened to a detailed report by the state of El Salvador and the existing regulations in that country and the institutions that are working need to focus as many resources as human resources um, as possible in order to um, 
perform these prevention preventive efforts because the most painful part of this is that with that every day with every day with every week we see more and more families who are suffering the loss the not knowing where their family members are and apart from that within the framework of due diligence this has a side that has to do with high levels of impunity and in order to address high levels of impunity many a time it is necessary to generate specialized units to fight within the framework of due process um this um to investigate these cases maybe with other institutions like the public prosecution or some specialized courts so in that plan in that action plan it's not just about prevention which is fundamental but also the way impunity is addressed because impunity usually goes hand in hand with these human rights violations the report presented by the states i don't know if they are going to send it to us but it would be very interesting uh, for you to send it to the Commission, since you have presented a series of actions that you are undertaking and also the uh, normative uh, in your country. So I would like to receive that report. Thank you very much. Thank you, Commissioner Rallon. I have a couple of questions uh, with after our in loco visit. In this in local visit, the uh, commission focused on enforced appearances during the armed conflict. And this hearing is much broader because it's about disappearances in general, but there are certain topics that, well, I was reviewing our preliminary observations and I see these issues uh, appearing over and over again. Um, with regards to the recommendations, I would like to know the status of the ratification to, of the um, Inter-American Convention uh, in, uh, on uh, enforced disappearances. We discussed this during the in local visit. We believe that the state had understood how important it was. So we would like to know about the status of that proceeding. Are there any obstacles for the ratification for different opinions that sometimes come up in Congress? And if that's the case, how can the commission help? Because I think that is fundamental in a country where unfortunately this phenomenon has been on the rise for the different reasons that were presented at this hearing. The same, uh, another thing that has to do with this visit and uh, something that was uh, presented by the civil society is the implementation of the national act for searching victims of enforced disappearances. The state said it's working on it, but I would like to know uh, the exact status of that. And another thing I remember from my previous visits to uh, El Salvador was that the victims repeatedly pointed out, and they have just pointed out, uh, pointed it out as well, but and the state says it's working on it, but I would like to know about the genetic bank, something that uh, since the case of the Serrano Cruz sisters has been uh, there, the state said that they are that it's working with it with international cooperation. But I'd like to understand why there hasn't been any more progress. Is it about the resources? What are the obstacles the state is facing? Because we understand there's an agreement here. We understand the state wants to move forward but cannot do it. So we would like to understand the obstacles. Why this framework that I think would be fundamental uh, has seen no progress in spite of the of the efforts uh, um, and maybe see how the Inter-American Commission or the UN Committee can aid the state in this. So it would be very important to know where the obstacles are on these three topics, which at least for in, our, in my previous um, visits to Salvador, it was something that came up personally, um, repeatedly, sorry, as a demand. And now we see that it's uh, linked to this current situation of disappearances because they are fundamental to generate institutionality for prevention and to face the phenomenon. And another thing that I find striking, something that the organizations pointed out, 
and that appears again with regards to the victims of armed conflicts is the lack of communication between the initiatives and the work of the state with the um, civil society organizations and the family members. I don't know if there's a formal channel of dialogue with the organizations and the family members, but according to evidence shows us that the way to fight these uh, crimes is in a participatory manner through dialogue. You will always see differences and anxiety from the family members, of course, because they want to find the, their loved ones as quickly as possible. But in our experience, progress can be made, especially uh, in the face of such a scourge, but you can only move forward when there is permanent communication. So is there a formal channel with the organizations that are working on the search and the family members? How do you work together to build solutions to get to uh, face this matter, as Margaret was saying, um, through institutions, but also through culture, because we are, what we have heard is that enforced disappearances are used for several purposes. Um, the uh, civil society mentioned that it's done by individuals, by gangs, by the state. So we're talking about culture, and this needs to be addressed with the family members, with the civil society and the state working together. And something else that has to do with this is the work with officials, the first person who receives the family member how uh, the organizations pointed out that many a time they are sent from one office to the other or they are stigmatized. So how are you working on that? On the first official who receives the report, are you providing training programs so that they will be more empathic when we're talking about a very painful and serious crime that has a terrible impact on family members and on society as a whole? So I will first give the floor to the civil society organizations so that they can make their comments for 10 minutes and afterwards the state will have another 10 minutes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. And the response by the state. The state has a protocol and the experience and the practice uh, transmitted by the relatives, the victims, or any persons who want to file a, a complaint regarding the disappearance of a relative, we still face obstacles, for example, in the case of the National Civil Police, and there is two, 24 hours um, we have to wait before starting an investigation. Also, we have to face stigmatization and criminalization um, and this is quite present. We need to highlight that in the case of women, especially, they faced different stigmatization, gender-based. For example, women, uh, they say that women have run away with their partners or they have left the country in an illegal way. And that's, that affects other persons um, and hinders the activation of other mechanisms that have been implemented by the state. In 2018, the protocol was uh, passed uh, at that time, but there was no criminal time to recognize this kind of crime at that time. And this was carried out by the National Civil Police and the prosecution. In spite of the fact that there have been processes through which the country, uh, the state has uh, implemented protocols that cannot be, that was not implemented in all institutions. We see that in the interior of the country, they still face uh, these situations in which the urgent action protocol is not uh, activated. And the institutions, uh, they say that uh, they uh, do not have any jurisdiction over to activate the protocol when the persons do not belong to that department or municipality. They tell them that they need to um, go to other places in order to activate those mechanisms. We need to highlight that the state should have a search mechanism in order to find the disappeared and also a data bank in order to identify uh, in a timely fashion and identify persons who have disappeared. 
we do not have this element right now and it is important not only to talk about the persecution of the crime but also the punishment and also the uh, reparation of uh, the victims we would like the state of el salvador to uh, strengthen mechanisms uh, regarding compensation and also the attention for adolescents and uh, children who uh, are not protected due to the fact that their mothers have disappeared. There are many persons who are living uh, this situation. Also, we believe it is important to identify and we are concerned, for example, in the Chal Chuapa case, their um, state uh, took five months in order to uh, provide an answer regarding the remains that were found in these um, graves. There are some family members that are still requesting a response from the state of El Salvador. The way in which the state respectfully managed this should be reflected in all the institutions in the country so that all uh, family members can contribute can continue searching for their relatives. Also, we want to request the state to put at the disposal of the commission all the documents and protocols that have mentioned so far. We need to come to this stage in order to have a dialogue with the state, between the state and the civil society organizations. Different organizations and collectives have requested having a dialogue in order to discuss uh, security and the attention to the victims. We hope that uh, from now on, the state of El Salvador considers um, what keeping the word of the Ministry of Minister of National Security that, who said that there will be an open dialogue with the relatives of the disappeared persons. The state should take into account the importance of empathy and the implementation of different protocols in order to provide attention to the victims. Finally, we would like to thank publicly the Commission and the committee for the offering made to cooperate with the state. That offer to provide technical cooperation may help overcome these kind of issues and we would like to highlight, as my colleague has mentioned, that the state should open spaces of dialogue and cooperation in regard to this issue in El Salvador. This is a serious scourge, and we need institutional support from all state institutions, but also a uh, dialogue based on trust and cooperation with the civil society organizations, the different committees of victims that are working on this uh, matter. Also, we want to highlight the need for the state to reassess the policy regarding the uh, spreading of information because every institution has information and every week we see that there are obstacles the different organizations that try to offer options and solutions in order to overcome this situation we want to publicly thank this hearing and we are at your disposal to have a dialogue to cooperate with the state because we acknowledge that this issue is very complex and requires of our participation in order to um, comprehensively address it uh, which is what the victims need thank you
Thank you to the civil society organizations. I will now give the floor to the state for 10 minutes. Good morning. It's a pleasure to be with you. Thank you for this opportunity. We have been working on regarding the cases that were mentioned, the armed conflict. We are currently working with different uh, members of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, and we are working on solving the armed conflict. This is a very complex situation. We are working on this. And this year and the next year, we are implementing different measures. In the case of Chachuapa, we recovered In May, 12 victims, 12 remains, the remains of 12 victims. This case was concluded in September. We try, we, it took us four months to process all the evidence in order to identify the remains. The 12 persons that were identified, the relatives were notified about this we try to follow a protocol in order to provide remedy. We have worked in an interdisciplinary way with psychologists. And we have also worked with anthropologists. We tried to, to preserve these um, these sites, these graves in which the remains were found in order to guarantee the efficient identification of these victims. These cases, the case of the armed conflict and child Chuapa, well, took us a long time. We worked for four months in this case. And and comparing it to other similar cases, these kind of cases take usually one year. We use, we work together with the best specialists in the country, and we have made progress as much as possible. And we are working so that these cases, whether we are talking about enforced disappearances or the identification of remains, we have implemented a protocol that allows us to work faster in order to prevent the suffering of the victims. The case of Chalchuapa required us to implement a protocol. The Ministry of Justice, the public prosecution, they work together jointly providing support so we have made great progress and we have tried to identify the remains as fast as possible with the aim of reducing the uh, suffering of those secondary victims good afternoon from the point of view of the public prosecutor's office, within the constitutional framework, we need to uh, investigate the crimes, taking into, this, into account this approach. We have been able to work more efficiently if we compare that to previous years. We are trying to establish prior, um, a special areas where crime is present, and we are trying to carry out an investigation to work in a preventive way, uh, pre 
persecuting the perpetrators, but also uh, trying to avoid the crimes. So all the actions carried out are aimed at identifying the per uh, perpetrators. We are trying to provide psychological attention in the case of disappeared persons. We provide psychological support, support by using the services of our unit. Also, we are uh, working in coordination with the civil society. We are trying to establish a public uh, format for public complaints to be filed and trying to change the methodology that is being used with the aim of avoiding re-victimization of the persons that are filing the complaint uh, in order to uh, improve um, the first um, moment of dialogue with public officials. We are working at an institutional level, the different uh, state institutions, the judiciary, the national civil police, and each of them within its jurisdiction, we are trying to deepen the investigation of disappeared persons are trying to find a solution to that issue. Those are some of the activities we are carrying out. And this has allowed us since 2018 to keep, um, to be able to prevent 50% of the cases. That's all, thank you. Good afternoon. Once again, I want to greet all the representatives of the CS Society, the commissioners that are present here in, here in this hearing, and those who are watching this. I represent the Ministry of Justice and Public Safety There are several questions made. As you have said, the ministry, the administration, the minister, when he took office as minister, he implemented this space of dialogue, not only at a group level with the civil society organizations, but also a dialogue with all members of society. These are issues that have been defined as priorities. And we know that only through feedback and joint coordination that timely feedback can allow us to adjust public policies in the case of this phenomenon of, of the phenomenon of disappeared persons. This is a priority for this administration. So that commitment is present, it exists, and it is about to restore that mechanism of dialogue. Also, what the country reporter was mentioning regarding prevention, the Copatlan plan, the unit, in charge of women's rights, is focused on prevention and all the policies and actions are not isolated. This is a cross-sectional entity that gathers all institutions. We are aware of the complexity of the phenomenon and we know that the approach should be multi-sectoral. The Ministry of Justice, as the 
entity in charge of policies in terms of public safety. We have a unit that is in charge of reconstructing the social fabric in order to establish mechanisms to restore the social fabric, to restore those values of humanity within the territory, especially in those places where there is a, there is a higher rate of criminal activity. Values that were lost due to the abandonment of the estate. As several persons have mentioned, this includes a viewpoint of the estate and the establishment of opportunities. This entity allows the estate to provide solutions in all its territory. This has a preventive uh, character and and that's all I would like to mention about that. We also have uh, representatives of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. In order to conclude, Madam Commissioner, we would like to highlight that within the framework of the meetings prior to this hearing, we will um, share all the questions that were made. Um, these questions will be shared to all relevant institutions and the information that was requested will be shared as well. Also, we could like to highlight that we are waiting the final report regarding the in loco visit to El Salvador, and in which several institutions of the state have participated. So once that report is ready, we will be able to share it and work within the framework of the recommendations in order to um, provide the necessary uh, solutions. Thank you. Thank you to the state and thank you to the uh, civil society organizations for this hearing that deals with an issue that not only affects El Salvador, but many countries in the region. We are witness of this scourge and I would like to highlight the importance of this kind of dialogue and dialogue mechanisms that the state has pointed out they are working on. I'd like to highlight the importance of establishing mechanisms of dialogue with civil society organizations and relatives. The countries that were able to overcome this kind of sketch is through this open dialogue with the family members and the organizations. These are key actors and they are allies to face this uh, sketch. So we will closely follow this uh, dialogue mechanism. And as the representative of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs pointed out, we are about to publish the country report on the Salvador, which will include recommendations. Many of them are part of the preliminary observations that we have shared. And the commission always makes recommendations in the reports in order to establish a roadmap. We hope this is also the case so that we can work jointly in a common agenda to establish uh, opportunities for technical cooperation, dialogue with the different actors, with the civil society and victims as well. Thank you to everyone for being present today. Thank you for the Committee on Enforced Disappearances and to everyone who have participated uh, in this hearing, and we will keep on working on this. Thank you. Thank you. Goodbye.